everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about negativity bias and cognitive biases in general. So I'm going to be citing a book uh, specifically on this topic. And the book is called Hardwiring Happiness. Hardwiring Happiness is a book about our negativity bias and how we can try to um, incorporate more positive states. Um, going off of the past video, the last one, on toxic positivity, this is not talking about toxic positivity, right? This is still holding um, negative states as well, okay? But there is a reason why we are gravitating towards probably negative self-talk and negative states and why happiness seems to elude us so much. And it has to do with how our brain is wired. Now, our in our evolutionary past, um, it turns out it wasn't that advantageous to be focusing on positive states. Um, because if we were looking for food, or what have you, and you get the food, and you are satiated by eating one berry, because you can just, oh yeah, that was, that berry was so good, right? I don't feel like I need to go anywhere else. The, but the positive state actually um, is so fleeting. It tastes good, but then it goes away. That the lack of that taste drives us to go find more. Or um, we are very motivated by pain, by fear by negative emotions, all these things to make changes as well. When we're feeling good and we can look back in our day and think, yeah, like a lot of really nice things happened and I operated in this way that I'm proud of and all these things, it doesn't really drive change all that much because uh, if we're focusing more on the things that happen that are really nice, it doesn't necessarily drive change. But um, negativity, on the other hand, um, is turns out to be quite advantageous for evolution. Because in general, if um, somebody mistakes a stick for a snake and they jump away from that stick, um, there's probably very little chance that they're going to encounter a snake. But the fact that they mistook the stick for a snake and they had a fear response to it, it's actually beneficial to their survival. Because if it was a snake, they would have been out of the way. And the people who didn't have that response, maybe wouldn't have responded by getting away from the snake if it was a snake, right? Or hearing a rustling in the bushes, right? Chances are, it's not a tiger. But for the off chance that it is a tiger, it's probably good to pay attention to it, right? Rather than dismissing it and thinking about how awesome this other thing is. So focusing on negative states and then learning from those negative states uh, was really good for evolution. But this persists till today. And there's probably in some, in some ways, it's probably beneficial to be focusing on negative states, like what you want to change, what to look out for, uh, in relationships or friendships or whatever. But for the most part, um, we've probably turned our negativity way up to 10, where the positive states kind of are very fleeting. And in this book, Hardwiring Happiness, they talk a lot about that factor, the negativity bias, how it's basically always present uh, for us to be focusing on negative states. And that focusing a little bit more on positive states can help balance that out. Not in a way that you're negating neg negativity, but that we are trying to spend a little bit more time with the positive things as they happen. And the way that they describe this is in, um, you know, doing what I had said, like replacing negative self-talk with some positive self-talk. Um, you can think about this as like a kind of like an affirmation based thing. Or um, when something positive happens, to recognize that that's happening and spend about 10 seconds or so 
in that positive experience because that's about how long it takes for your brain to encode that positive response into your long-term memory so that we will actually remember it. it uh, and it turns out that negative um, experiences are put into long-term memory almost immediately. So we're more likely to remember the negative states than the positive states, unless we do this trick where we are sticking with the positive traits for a little bit longer consciously. So it could be drinking a cup of coffee in the morning. It could be appreciating a sunset rather than looking at the sunset thinking that's beautiful. And then returning to uh, the project that you have on your mind that's like not going well and you're really stressed out about it. You wanna sit for about 10 seconds and really enjoy the sunset or the cup of coffee or the meal that you're eating rather than eating, eating the meal, barely tasting it and being stressed out about what's happening two weeks from now. We want to taste the food and let it sink in 10 seconds before moving on. So in replacing our self-talk with some a little bit more positive and helpful self-talk, identifying ourselves with being a learner rather than being just bad at our instrument or what have you, we are facilitating a little bit more positivity into our life and we are getting more in control of our frustration. And we are able to maybe motivate ourselves in that way to come back. If we are constantly telling ourselves, why am I even doing this? I'm no good and I'm never going to be good. Rather than I'm learning and I have made improvements and um, I'm going to continue to make improvements and there is kind of nothing I can't do then um, we are going to probably see a positive benefit there.